a huge storm is developing right now, which will lead to significant severe weather, record-breaking warmth, and heavy snow across the United States. A rapid weather shift is underway, as an intense surge of historically warm air pushes north and overwhelms much of the country. This setup will allow for storms to intensify quickly over the next few days. The main concern will be an increasing risk of severe weather, which begins today and ends on Saturday. Conditions will become more favorable for strong to severe thunderstorms, especially across the central and eastern parts of the country. Damaging winds, large hail, and a few tornadoes are likely, especially on Friday where an elevated risk of severe weather is in place. As this system continues to evolve, colder air will move in late Friday night into Saturday, causing rain to transition to snow across a wide swath of the country, with accumulating snowfall possible from parts of Texas through the Midwest and into Michigan, which could lead to a widespread four to eight inches of snow with localized higher amounts possible. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about this big storm that is about to impact the United States. Now we have a lot to talk about in today's forecast, and I want to begin first by talking about our general weather pattern that'll be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And to look at that, we are going to look at our jet stream. And right now we actually have a storm that is forming in Arizona, and this is going to bring a risk of severe weather tonight into tomorrow across parts of the Southern Plains and back into the mid Mississippi Valley where damaging winds, large hail and an isolated tornado threat will exist. And there could even be some snow with this, but the larger storm is going to come Thursday and Friday because after that little shortwave trough makes its way up into the Great Lakes, we are going to see a much larger dip in the jet stream develop across the Rockies. And this is going to be the storm that brings a lot more problems, including the risk of significant severe weather in areas like the lower Mississippi Valley and the Ohio Valley, heavy snowfall to the Great Lakes, including areas like Chicago on Saturday. And on top of that, very high winds. This is going to be a widespread impact storm that we are going to see Friday and Saturday across the United States. It really all begins Friday. Our jet stream will rapidly intensify here across the Southern Plains, back into the Great Lakes, and then severe weather will be on the table Friday, mainly across the lower Mississippi Valley. All hazards will be on the table. And then on Saturday, the storm is right over the Great Lakes, which means on the backside of this low pressure system, we are going to have some very cold air coming out of Canada, and this should help to basically lead to a potential for some heavy snowfall on the west side and the north side of this low pressure system. So if you're in Wisconsin, Illinois, Michigan, even parts of Iowa, you guys could see some snowfall as we go into Friday and Saturday. We could see several inches of snowfall out of this. While all that's happening, we'll also have a possibility of snow as far south as the Texas Panhandle and western Oklahoma. We'll talk more about that here in a moment. And then by Sunday and Monday, we will continue to have a pretty decent dip in our jet stream across much of the Great Lakes, the Northern Plains, the Ohio Valley, and the Northeast. That should keep things below average when it comes to temperatures during the middle and end of next week, and that could lead to an Arctic blast sometime around the middle of January. Now, before we dive deeper into the specific details with this severe weather event, I do want to talk more about the broad overview of where this storm is going to be making impacts and who could see some big impacts out of this storm. This is a bit of a different type of storm that we are not accustomed to during this time of the year because it's going to be more geared towards severe weather. So let's talk more about it. This is what it looks like by Thursday morning. We will have a storm system forming in Kansas, Colorado, and Texas. Showers and thunderstorms will be initiating across areas near Wichita Falls, Texas, back through Oklahoma City, just to the south of Kansas City, where damaging winds, large hail, maybe a low-end tornado threat will exist. But things really kick into gear Thursday afternoon. This storm system will just gradually intensify and organize as it moves into Missouri during the afternoon. And this should create a threat of severe weather on the south and east side of that low pressure system from St. Louis back into northeastern Texas, even near Dallas-Fort Worth, where damaging winds, isolated large hail, and maybe a tornado or two will be on the table. I'm not super confident about severe weather right now on Thursday because there will be a lack of instability, which basically is storm fuel, but there will be a lot of wind shear. So if we are for some reason able to get a mature supercell, the tornado risk is definitely on the table. I'm just not overly confident that that's going to transpire on Thursday. This storm will move into the Midwest late Thursday, and you might be wondering, what's going on down here in the Southeast? Where's our big storm? Well, this is the first of two different storms, actually. We are going to see this storm move into the Midwest Thursday night. Some snow and a mix of rain and snow will stretch from Wausau, Wisconsin, back into northwestern Kansas. We'll also have plenty of snow across the Rockies, and there will be some showers and thunderstorms as far north as Indiana, and this is going to also be an area that will have record-breaking heat as we go into Friday. So this storm is going to be shattering records because it's basically going to be pulling tons of
tons of warm air and also moist air out of the Gulf and stretching it up into Michigan and also Ohio. And something else I want to point out is do not forget about this little area of snow in the desert southwest late Thursday because this is actually going to factor into our large storm system that is forming over the Midwest and this will actually become a second storm and we'll talk more about that here in a second. But on Friday this storm over the Midwest will continue to move to the northeast and all that moisture is going to be getting tugged off to the northeast into areas like New England. So if you're back over New England it is going to actually be pretty mild on Friday but we also need to watch down here near the Gulf Coast for severe weather as we are going to have a lot of moisture enough instability and also plenty of wind shear in place as this other storm system is eventually going to come together over Texas and subnoptically speaking we could see an organized threat of severe weather try to develop on Friday but there will be a lot of convection and that could make this setup extremely messy but in a moment we're going to go more in detail on timing about Wednesday Thursday and Friday's severe weather threat and exactly where the greatest tornado threat is going to reside and all the other risks of severe weather by early Saturday the storm system will continue to impact the southeast and look on the back side of that low pressure system we are going to have snow and cold air pulling around the backside we'll have maybe an isolated risk of severe weather on Saturday in the southeast near Atlanta Georgia South Carolina and Florida but snow will become the bigger story on Saturday as light to moderate snow will drape parts of the Midwest and the Great Lakes freezing rain is on the table back over in Ontario and then by late Saturday into early Sunday this winter storm will make its way out of the United States and then the beginning of next week looks a lot quieter than what we're going to be dealing with for the next four days now let's talk more about the severe weather potential over the next few days and we'll begin with today which is Wednesday and we have a marginal threat of severe weather in place for parts of Oklahoma and north central Texas and this is mostly going to be an overnight risk where damaging winds isolated large hail and perhaps an isolated brief tornado are going to be on the table but Thursday is when we're going to have a much larger and more expansive marginal threat of severe weather which this is going to stretch from central Illinois near Springfield all the way back towards Dallas Fort Worth but this is by far the largest marginal threat that we've had in the United States for several months all of Arkansas is in this as well biggest concern will be isolated damaging winds and hail but we do have a large two percent tornado risk in place which goes up and down the Mississippi River Valley and includes Little Rock Arkansas just east of Dallas Fort Worth near Tulsa Oklahoma where a couple of tornadoes are possible tomorrow afternoon and evening once again this is a high wind shear but low instability setup it could very easily be a day where nothing happens it could also be a day where we could have at least a couple maybe even a few tornadoes so there is a chance of a live stream make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live and speaking of live streams i do think we will have a live stream on friday as the storm prediction center now has a level two out of five slight risk of severe weather from nashville tennessee back into central and southern louisiana and a marginal threat from indiana back into east texas where all hazards of severe weather will be on the table including the risk of damaging winds large hail and a few tornadoes are likely which does mean a live stream is likely we will have a bunch of storm chasers out there so definitely make sure to stay tuned for this in case we do end up going live now let's talk more about the timing of severe weather we'll begin with what is happening today it is going to be a very quiet afternoon for most of the southern plains overnight tonight though is when storms will begin to fire off across western oklahoma and north central texas most of these will not fire off until about three in the morning so there's really no need to stay up late tonight waiting for these storms to happen because they're going to be very very late just make sure they have multiple ways to receive alerts by around five to six in the morning these storms will track across central oklahoma where the biggest concern will be damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour quarter sized hail and maybe a brief tornado but again the tornado risk in this setup is very low for tonight as we go into thursday afternoon storms will start to fire off again and this will be primarily in this corridor here from northeast texas back towards st louis and i think the greatest threat of severe weather will fall after four o'clock generally speaking though this is a pretty conditional threat of severe weather which is why the probabilities of severe weather are pretty low today even though it's a large area damaging winds will be the primary concern isolated quarter sized tail and a couple of tornadoes definitely can't be ruled out if we get any sort of mature supercells in this environment but i think if anything does actually materialize here it's probably going to be closer to six seven or eight o'clock tomorrow night so that'll be the main time frame to watch for and then overnight it'll still remain pretty stormy across the mississippi valley so thunderstorms will be in play which does mean if you have any plans to go to sleep early on thursday you might have some problems back over in western tennessee and southeast missouri with all the thunder that'll be happening and then for those in the midwest in the ohio valley thursday is gonna be pretty rainy for most areas in iowa and illinois but we'll be watching for a few storms to try to fire up during the mid to late afternoon hours again the rufus model here not really showing a whole lot of organization with these storms until around or just after sunset 
that would be the best chance for any storms to actually have success in thriving, perhaps producing an isolated tornado. But after midnight, storms will be out there still, just not a whole lot of severe weather left over here from anywhere from Indianapolis back towards Little Rock. And then as we go into Friday morning, it'll still remain pretty stormy. And then on Friday, we'll have to watch for the threat of maybe some significant severe weather, primarily in the lower Mississippi Valley. Right now, for those in Tennessee, Kentucky, it doesn't look like that much of a day. It, if any severe weather happens, it'll probably be sometime closer to 10 to 11 o'clock. But I think it's just going to be a lot of rain in Tennessee and Kentucky. I think if you're further south in areas like southeast Arkansas, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Alabama, those are the states that really need to be on alert for the threat of severe storms. So across the southeast and the lower Mississippi Valley, Friday morning will feature a few showers and thunderstorms. Severe weather should start to uptick as we go into the afternoon by around 3 to 4 o'clock. There will likely be several supercells that will try to form here in the lower Mississippi Valley. I think the one big problem right now for Friday's setup is that we could see it overconvect, which basically means there's just too many storms out there to really have any sort of legit organization with these supercells. But if we do end up seeing more of discrete activity here during the afternoon on Friday, we definitely could see a low-end threat of a tornado outbreak across the lower Mississippi Valley. This also includes areas, by the way, back over in East Texas. So if you're back over there near East, East Texas, north of Houston, I definitely wouldn't rule out an isolated tornado during the afternoon. During the evening, these storms will continue. We'll likely have a messy area of thunderstorms continuing into the overnight hours across Alabama and Mississippi. This does raise concerns for a possibility of flooding, and so we definitely have to watch for that anywhere from Huntsville back towards areas near Lake Charles, Louisiana. And then on Saturday, these storms will continue to move to the east with mainly a wind threat, but another isolated tornado risk can't be ruled out in Georgia, maybe Alabama, or even southern Mississippi. And another thing that this storm is going to bring is record-breaking high temperatures and low temperatures across much of the country. By Thursday night, areas like Chicago, Indiana, back into the lower Mississippi Valley will be as much as 40 degrees above average, which is just absurd for January standards. Friday morning will be one of those warmest mornings that we've ever had in January for most of Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky. Temperatures will be well above average. And then by Saturday, all that warm air will continue to shift to the east and areas like Maryland, Pennsylvania, even back through North Carolina and South Carolina could have some record-breaking temperatures on their hands before things are normal again by Sunday. Now, this is really crazy. We are going to have over 250 different temperature records either broken or tied just over the next four days. And it all begins tomorrow morning across the Midwest and the Southern Plains. A large area will either be challenging or breaking record-breaking low maximum temperatures, which basically means it's going to be one of the warmest mornings on record for a January here from areas like Chicago back into South Texas, including Houston. The high temperatures are going to be broken across the Southeast, mainly for Houston, though. It's going to be about two degrees above the record set back in 2019 at 81 degrees for January 8th. And then for the morning of Friday, which is January 9th, this is crazy. We're going to have at least 44 locations here from South Texas back into the Upper Peninsula of Michigan with their warmest mornings really of all time in January, but at least for the January 9th day, including Ohio, Kentucky, and as well as Tennessee, many areas as high as 8 to 10 degrees above the previous record. Cincinnati at 57 degrees, very abnormal for this time of the year. And we will have plenty of record breaking high temperatures to go along with this but the madness does not stop there because on Saturday we are going to have a large swath across the Ohio Valley and the East Coast with many areas above record breaking temperatures in the morning 51 degrees for a morning temperature back over in Maryland and areas like Virginia at least 5 to 10 degrees above the previous record for a January 10th morning so all these records are going to be happening between today all the way through Saturday it is going to be a crazy stretch of weather to say the least and as always thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. By the way, what I was just showing you guys is actually a website that I am currently building, which will have a lot of other cool weather stuff, but that's one of the little things that we are currently working on, which is a temperature record map, which will be really cool, so definitely stay tuned for the release of the website. And also, our next video will definitely be tomorrow. We could be live tomorrow. We could be live on Friday, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live, and we will see you in the next video.